And I hope you've uh, managed to see the recap of chapter five um, and are enjoying the book as much as I am. I'm going to read today from chapter six. So the chapter starts uh, with a bit of a problem. Do you remember Gus has surprised her uh, by using up his wish from that special foundation that provides wishes for those kids who are dying of cancer. And he's used up his wish in order to take her on a surprise trip to Amsterdam. Um, but Hazel, although she's really excited about this, she starts to stress. And she, to her, that gives her a problem which she rings her best friend about. She thinks that if he takes her to Amsterdam, she will be expected to uh, kiss him, which she hasn't dared do yet, and that he might get too attached to her. So I'm going to start reading on page 96 of chapter six. Okay, it starts with, I realized while listening, okay? So she's talking to her best friend, Caitlin. I realized while listening to Caitlin that I didn't have a premonition of hurting him I had a postmonition. Premonition is when you have a real feeling that something's going to happen. Uh, postmonition is after the event. So uh, I pulled out my laptop and looked up Caroline Mathers. This is the ex-girlfriend of Gus who had died from cancer. The physical similarities were striking. Same steroidly round face, same nose, same approximate overall body shape. But her eyes were dark brown, minor green, and her complexion was much darker, Italian or something. Thousands of people, literally thousands, had left condolence messages for her. It was an endless scroll of people who missed her. So many that it took me an hour of clicking to get past the I'm sorry you're dead wall posts to the I'm praying for you wall posts. She died a year ago of brain cancer. I was able to click through to some of her pictures. Augustus was in a bunch of the earlier ones, pointing with the thumbs up to the jagged scar across her bald skull, arm in arm at Memorial Hospital's playground with their backs facing the camera, kissing while Caroline had the, held the camera out so you could just see their noses and closed eyes. The most recent pictures were all of her before when she was healthy, uploaded post-mortem, that means after death, by friends, a beautiful girl, wide-hipped and curvy, with long, straight, dead black hair falling over her face. My healthy self looked very little like her healthy self, but our cancer selves might have been sisters. No wonder he'd stared at me the first time he saw me. I kept clicking back to this one wall post, written two months ago, nine months after she died by one of her friends. We all miss you so much. It just never ends. It feels like we were all wounded in your battle. Caroline, I miss you. I love you. After a while, mum and dad announced it was time for dinner. I shut down the computer. I got up, but I couldn't get the wall post out of my mind. And for some reason, it made me nervous and unhungry. I kept thinking about my shoulder, which hurt. And also, I still had the headache but maybe only because I'd been thinking about a girl who died of brain cancer. I kept telling myself to compartmentalise, to be here now at the circular table, arguably too large in diameter for three people and definitely too large for two, with this soggy broccoli and a black bean burger that all the ketchup in the world could not adequately moisten. I told myself that imagining a met in my brain or my shoulder would not affect the invisible reality going on inside of me and that therefore all such thoughts were wasted moments in a life composed of a definitionally finite set of such moments. I even tried to tell myself to live my best life today. For the longest time, I couldn't figure out why something a stranger had written on the internet to a different and deceased stranger was bothering me so much and making me worry that there was something inside my brain which really did hurt although I knew from years of experience that pain is a blunt and non-specific diagnostic instrument. Because there had not been an earthquake in Papua New Guinea that day, my parents were all hyper-focused on me, and so I could not hide this flash flood of anxiety. 
Is everything all right? Asked Mum as I ate. Uh-huh, I said. I took a bite of burger, swallowed. Tried to say something that a normal person whose brain was not drowning in panic would say. Is there broccoli in the burgers? A little, Dad said. Pretty exciting that you might go to Amsterdam. Yeah, I said. I tried not to think of the word wounded, which of course is a way of thinking about it. Hazel, Mum said, where are you right now? Just thinking, I guess. Twitter pated, my dad said, smiling. I'm not a bunny and I'm not in love with Gus Waters or anyone, I answered way too defensively. Wounded, like Caroline Mathers had been a bomb and when she blew up, everyone around her was left with embedded shrapnel. Dad asked me if I was working on anything for school. 